When Mother Sita was kidnapped by Ramana and the Rakshasas, Lord Ramachandra, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, could have married hundreds and thousands of Sitas. But to teach us how faithful he was to his wife, he fought with Ravana and finally killed him. The Lord punishes Ravana and rescued his wife who struck men to have only one wife. Lord Ramachandra said from only one wife, I manifested sublime character, thus setting an example for householders. A householder should live according to the ideal of Lord Ramachandra, who showed how to be a perfect person. Being a householder of living with wife and children is never condemned, provided one lives according to the regulative principles of Barna Dharma. Those who live in accordance with these principles, whether as householders, Brahmachari, or Brahmasta, are all equally important. So Lord Ramchandra was teaching the old world uh, that uh, it's the best to have only one wife. I mean, he could have married thousands of the Lakshmis uh, if he wanted to, but no. He wanted to show human society that uh, uh, one should have only one wife. And that's very moral instruction. You know, when Lord Ramachandra was living in the forest, he was approached by who? Shurpa. Huh? Shurpa. 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 She's Ravana's sister. Uh, she became lusty after Lord Ramachandra because he was very beautiful. So she became very much attracted to him. Using her power, she became a very beautiful girl, young, beautiful girl. So she approached the Lord and asked him, uh, she very frankly said, I'm very much attracted to you. You are so handsome, so beautiful. Please marry me. Ramachandra said, oh, I'm very flattered, such a beautiful girl that likes me, you know. But uh, I'm not really married, and he is my wife, Sita. But my brother, Lakshman, he's free. You can go to him. <laughs> so she went to Lakshman. Oh, dear Lakshman, you're also very handsome and beautiful. Uh, why you wouldn't marry me, please? And like I said, oh, I'm very much flattered too, but uh, such beautiful girl like you. But you don't want to marry a servant. I'm a servant of my brother. But he's the king. You shouldn't insist on him. <laughs> so she went back to Lord Ramchandra. Please marry me, I, you know. And he said, I mean, Lord Ramchandra told her, uh, I would have married you, but I made a vow. But to have only one wife. And it is my wife Sita, so please forgive me. I can't accept. He was very kind, very gentle. And then, when, you know, material desire not fulfilled, what happened? Anger comes. Don't become angry. <laughs> so she became angry at Sita Devi. Oh, because of you, you will not marry me. So she became. Which ugly, and she was gonna jump on Sita to harm Sita. She has a very long nails, big, big feet, very frightening. When Lakshman to protect Sita, they chop off her ears and nose. So she went screaming, crying. Now, in her next life, uh, she was born a hunchback woman in Mathura. When she saw Krishna <coughs> entering Mathura, her attraction was reawakened. And she immediately, she was a servant of, of Kamsa. Uh, and she was young but was hunchback, was ugly. But she immediately ran to Krishna and she had sandalwood paste she made for Kamsa. But she took this paste and started decorating the Lord the sandalwood paste, and Lord Krishna accepted the service. Uh, 
and, and being grateful, the Lord wanted to show his, her, his mercy to her. He grabbed her cheek and pulled her up, and uh, the hunchback disappeared. She became very, very beautiful. Very, she was 16 years old. And, and uh, still being very attracted, lusty, in a lusty way to the Lord, she invited him to her home. So the Lord went there, and he put his lotus feet on her chest, and in that way, all lusty desire disappeared, and she became pure devotee of the Lord. Immediately, she became pure devotee. So just see, even if someone is attracted to the Lord in any way, the final uh, outcome will be the person to come purified. <laughs> Tell you one, one story, true story. Many years ago, uh, one thief was running from the police. And uh, to hide, he saw a temple full of people, thousands of people. That's in India. People go by thousands. So he mixed with the crowd, and the police couldn't find him. But he remained at the temple, and then he stayed, you know, two, two three hours, the so police would leave him. And he sat down, and the speaker was talking about Krishna. And the speaker was saying, Krishna, Vrindavan, describing the beauty of Vrindavan, the beauty of Krishna, and then he was describing how Krishna wear uh, beautiful garlands and ne golden necklaces with jewels. So when the thief heard about the golden necklace with jewels, he became very interested to know more about Krishna. So when the lecture finished, he approached the lecturer, the speaker, and asked him, Oh, sir, can you please tell me where this Lord Krishna lives? Oh, he lives in Vrindavan. Oh, thank you very much. In which place in Vrindavan? Ah, the place is called Nandagao. Ah, thank you so much. So he went to the train station to find out how far was Vrindavan and how much it cost the ticket to go there. Then he went to his home and told his wife, dear wife, today I couldn't steal anything because almost the police called me. Uh, but I was safe. But today I came to know about one Mr. Krishna, who is very rich man. He has a golden necklace with valuable stones. So I'm planning to go to steal from him this necklace. But he lives far away, and I don't have money for the train. So please give me the golden earrings I gave you so I can sell them to go there. Don't worry, I will buy you three pairs when I come back. You will be rich. Oh, you know what you're doing, okay. So the men arrived at Brindavan. Uh, there is one train that goes into Brindavan called the Dharan Express. Have you used some time? I used once, <laughs> many years ago. <laughs> So anyway, the first person he met, oh, please, please, can you tell me uh, where Krishna's house is? Uh, I hear this Vandagao. It is true. Oh, you came to Vrindavan to search for Krishna. Well, yes. Oh, you are so fortunate. Uh, you are very blessed soul. Uh, but right now, at this time, Krishna is not in his house. At this time, Krishna usually with his friends and Baram tending the cows in the forest around this house. So who knows if you are very fortunate, you may could, could, could see him. Oh, thank you so much for your blessing. Thank you. So the man went there and was searching for Krishna all the forest around Krishna's house. And he, he could not he could not find him, of course. But then, uh, many days passed. 
many days passed and uh, couldn't find Krishna, but his, his desire increases, didn't diminish. He was not uh, discouraged. He was very determined. I must find this Krishna and steal from him. No matter what. And after like a week searching for Krishna day and night, his desire became like the hunger of a starving lion, you know, very intense. So one day he saw Krishna sitting on the rock under a tree with his cows around him. He became very happy. He ran, oh, Krishna Maharaj, Danya, he offered his respect, no? Namaste. And immediately he saw the golden necklace. No? So, he told to Krishna, uh, Dear Krishna Maharaj, your father Nanda Maharaj sent me here to ask you to give me this necklace. So to save it from thieves, maybe some thieves are out here. So please give, please give it to me, I will take it to your home for saving. Krishna said, if there was any danger of thieves, Mother Nature could not have put on me this, this uh, no, no, she also told me, don't come back without this necklace. Maybe some danger or not. And uh, Krishna said, thieves are not here. As far as I know, I'm not the only thief here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Krishna is very known as thief, no? Makancho. But he also liked to steal something more valuable than the Makan. He liked to steal the heart of his devotees. And not devotees alike. We may, we may build walls of Maya around our heart. But our hope is that Krishna as a thief can climb the, jump the wall and steal the heart. And steal. That's our hope. We should pray to Krishna like that. Anyway, so Krishna told him, Maybe you are the thief. And the thief said, Well, Krishna, to be honest, yes, I am a thief. But you are so nice and so rich, beautiful, I'm so poor and miserable. Why you just don't give me this necklace? You have many necklaces. One less, nothing for you. Krishna said, No, 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 I can't do that. If I go home without necklace, Mother Yashoda will be angry at me. I can't do that. So, the exchange went on between Krishna and the steam, and his heart was softened, you know, by Krishna's loving dealing. When finally Krishna took the necklace and was going to give to him, the man uh, fell in front of Krishna, crying, No, Krishna, I only want to be your devotee, your surrendered devotee. Please bless me. He became a great devotee. Of Lord it's a true story. Yeah? So we see even somebody approach the Lord for some other purpose, it end up is becoming purified. Some other. Yeah? So it's very important to understand that we are eternal servant of Krishna. We have a free will. The Lord is giving us the chance. You choose what you want to be, a devotee or a demon. A personalist, a materialist, what you want to be. It's up to you. So there's another quote by Prabhupada mm -hmm. speaking about this. Mm -hmm. uh, so this different types of want is different type of people. A demon's want is different and a demigod's want is different. But Krishna in both cases is the director. If he wants to if he wants to prosper in this life, alright, take my direction. Do it. You become a first class demon like Hiranyakashipur Ravana and become very powerful and create situation by which both you and your own family will be killed. <laughs> that direction is there. To a demigod, the devotee, his direction he has. He 
He goes back home, back to God. He plays with Krishna's carol boys. He dances with Krishna as a gopi. He becomes Krishna's father, mother. Clear it. Is it clear or not? Yes, yes, the devotees. Prabhupada. Krishna gives direction according to the person he what he wants. If he wants to, like a demon, Krishna will give him very good direction how to become first class demon. And if he wants to become an associate of Krishna devotee, then he will give you first class direction how you can you become. Without this direction, you cannot go even a step forward. You are dependent in both the cases. You are not independent. You are dependent in both cases. Now as you want, whether you want to become a demon or whether you want to become a devotee and make progress in that line, that is your decision. Is that clear? Is that clear? Yes, the devotees say yes. So that's the point. Huh? Since the beginning of creation, there are devatas and asuras. Beginning of creation, is it? Now, remember that Prabhupada was at the door uh, of Vaikuntha. Remember the past time? And the Kumaras came to enter. He and his brother, Jai Vijay, they stopped them. No, you can't come. You are small children. Go away. Do some tapasya. Some then you can, when you grow up, you can come. Not now. You are too small now. So Kumaras were very eager to see the Lord and they went stop, they became disturbed. And they cursed them. Oh, you are not fit to be here. You should go back to the material. So they were very frightened, you know. So the Lord came as sure protection. You are my devotee, you have my protection. And the same to the Kumaras, we are very sorry, we are sorry, we, we cursed your servant, we, take it, we can take it back. The Lord said, no, you are a great saint, your work must happen. Uh, but I am giving my servant two choices. You can be in the material world seven lifetimes as a devotee, or three lifetimes as a asura, demon. You choose. Uh, all right, so why did they choose to be seven life devotee? Anyway, it's four more lives, it's not too much. It's better to be devotee than him. <laughs> but they consulted each other. Jai Vijay, very intelligent. Why the Lord is offering us to come back sooner to my as soon as the devotee? Why? Oh, now we understand. He wants to fight demons. Right now is the beginning of creation, in the material world. There are no asuras yet. So they went to the Lord and prayed, or did Lord, please, please give us a very evil mentality so we can give you a very good fight. <laughs> they prayed like that. Because unless you have a, a, you know, very evil mentality, you can't become enemy of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And fight, you have to be very powerful. He will not so to fight the Lord. He will not fight with any the small people. Uh -huh. So anyway, in that way they became Ravana and Kumbhakarma. Then next time, uh, they became uh, first Hiranyaka Shippu Hiranyaksha. No, first Ravana Kumbhaka, then Hiranyaka Shippu Hiranyaksha. No, first, your first uh, Hiranyaka Shippu. Then Ravana Kumbhaka. And then uh, the last Shishupana Dantavaka. That was the last one. But they also appeared again in uh, Chaitanya Lila. As, uh, as who? Jagai Because they did such a good service as demons, asuras, that they were given opportunity to take part in Chaitanya. Uh, they got uh, Krishna Prema. From Vaikuntha Prema to Goloka Prema. 
upgrade. Because they didn't go to Seba as the Asura. So Asura is also doing Seba to the Lord, indirectly, in the sense by fighting them, killing them, the Lord, the Lord become more glorious, is it? Become more famous. So that, 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 that indirect way they are also doing seva to the Lord. But we don't recommend this type of seva. And, uh, and the Shastra has said, Anyabila Shita Shunyam Gena Karamale Namritam Anukul Yena Krishna Shilana Bhakti Ruttam. The Vaishnava service should be favorable to Krishna. Anukul Yena Krishna. It's pleasing to Krishna. Listen to Krishna. Krishna doesn't show his anger unless his devotees are in danger. Otherwise, he will not show his anger. The Lord became angry at Hilayaka Shikhu because he was threatening the life of his devotee Prahlad. Lord Ramchandra became angry at Ramana because he took away his devotee's wife from him. So he became angry at him. So unless his devotees is in danger, the Lord will not show his anger. Only to protect his devotees, he can show his anger. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, he doesn't do it. So we should understand that each and every one of us has this free will. One, to be a devotee, one to be a materialist, or an asura, what you want to be. And the Lord is giving direction. Prabhupada saying, even if you want to become a uh, big cheater, you need intelligence to do that. Huh? So, once I met the man, I was distributing books and asking, what uh, do you do for living? He said, oh, to tell you frankly, I don't work. Then how do you, you earn money? No. I, I go every day out of my house and pray to God. Please send me some food to cheat. So that's my job. Packing people, taking their money. And you don't know how many fools are out there. Just tell them to realize they immediately get their money. So this is the world of the cheaters and the cheaters. The material world. That somebody wants to become the naughty mean he doesn't want to be cheated anymore. He wants to be under the direction of the Lord and his pure devotees. Then we are safe. We are in a safe position. Is it? So it's very important to understand this philosophy of Krishna consciousness. So one who is fortunate, he becomes trained up in intelligence how to go back home, back to God. And one who is not fortunate, his intelligence is used to go to hell. That's all. That is Dushki. To become a member of the hellish condition of life, that also requires intelligence. How to become first class thief, how to become first class cheater, first class drunkard, first class smuggler, does not require intelligence. It requires intelligence. But that intelligence is being used for going to hell. Another intelligence is being used to going back home, back to God. Intelligence is there in both cases. Now is the technique, how to use it, that's all. That requires. That's a proper lecture in South Africa, October 18, 1975. So, intelligence required in any kind of activity. And who's giving the intelligence? Krishna. He, everything comes from him. Uh -huh. The knowledge, the forgetfulness, uh, the intelligence, everything comes from the Lord as uh -huh. The body is like a tree, and there are two birds in that tree. One bird is eating the fruit of happiness and sorrow. The other bird is at watching his friend waiting for him to remember him. We are never disconnected from Krishna. We just forgot him. Connection can't be lost, never. It's like a son and a father. 
The son may have never seen the father, but the connection is always there as father and son. That can be, can be brought. In the same way, our relationship with Krishna as his eternal servant cannot be broken. We just for God. So we are trying to remember, reawaken our remembrance of the Lord. And by doing so, we can prepare ourselves to go back home, back to God. This material world is not our real home. Here is danger every step. Padam padam yavi padam nati sham. Every step there is danger. The greatest danger is to forget the Lord and think ourselves separate, independent enjoyers. That's the greatest danger. That's the material consciousness. Everybody is struggling for existence in this material world. Trying to compete with each other, trying to be the best uh, in everything. But if we remember that we are only a small, tiny spark of the absolute truth. Uh, we are not independent. We need the air to breathe, food to eat, and who's providing all this? The Lord is providing all these facilities. So we should be grateful and worship the Lord. Uh, instead of separating Sita from Ravana like, like Ravana did, we should worship them together. To please them, and you will get all the blessings from the Lord. So that's very important. So tomorrow, that is that day. And uh, in relation to Navaratri, the worship Goddess Durga for uh, nine nights no? and ten days. Uh, and what for? People, they ask material blessing, no? Is it? People want some material blessing. What usually they ask for in Navaratri? Do you know? What kind of material blessing? Become rich, become healthy. Uh -huh. In this material world, everybody wants three things. Uh -huh. Health, money, and love. Isn't it? Three things. Uh -huh. But these things are not going to last forever. Krishna can give us his love, eternal love. Health and riches eternally is there in the spiritual world. Every step is a dance, every world is a coin. The land is made of touch stones, jewels everywhere. But we are wasting our time here trying to become rich for some time. Then at the time of death, we, we, we can't take anything with us. So, so much struggle, I mean, but we should know the goal. The goal of life is to go back home, back to God. That's the goal. And to do that, we should follow moral life uh, and chant the holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. Hare. So if you have any comment or questions, please do. We can have a little conversation. Yes. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for the wonderful explanation. As, as you said, we need to open up the time for the you know, I would just wondering about the beautiful pastime that you're explaining regarding a Sukata. Yes. Uh, now, you know, Lord Ram has a wonderful way of punishing or you know, rewarding people yes. or correcting people, whatever you know, he analyzes. Mm. But, you know, understanding the position of Sukata, sometimes we understand according to a scripture such as next to Negro devotion. Yes. Now, anything Maybe now you can share a light on that. Anything is justified if you have an intense longing for having Krishna, as Nectar devotion says, Lolyam Chapi Mulyam. That's correct. Yeah. So only the price you need to pay is a greed to have Krishna. So in this sense, 
we can see that Superman definitely is not for pure love of God, yes. but also understanding the point that Akama Sarvakama for anything to come. So all her was Sarvakama. Yes. And she wanted everything from her. So now Lord Ra chose the extreme way of punishment and understanding a woman who is unmarried and damaging her in a such a way that no other man would ever have her. <laughs> what type of punishment? It can make your way to be more ugly than she was already. <laughs> Poor Shorpanaka, the Lord was very unjust to her. But as Krishna is more liberal and more kind and more embracing everyone, you know, Ramchandra met by only one wife. Krishna met everyone. Can dance with me as a gopi, you know. Uh, Krishna married 16,000 wives. Krishna is more liberal. That's why people don't understand much Krishna as they understand more Ram, Ram Chandra. It's more moral according to human morality, mundane morality is, is more uh, easy to accept. For, for Krishna it's more difficult. Most people must understand what is this dancing with young girls, you know. Uh, so can you finish your question? Yes. So my thing is that, you know, we can never say any activity of Lord Ram, whatever he does, we can't say it is wrong. He of course so, We cannot say it is wrong. But how do you justify or explain this act of Lord Ram to make it that Ram is always right? He's always right. No matter what he does, because it's for the benefit of everyone. I mean, remember, Lord Ram Chandra didn't do it as well as uh, his brother, Lakshman, who did. The cutting. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course, but I need to say, like I said, the Lord doesn't show his anger unless his devotee's life is in danger. So, sure, Panaka was tolerated uh, until she wanted to attack Sita and harm Sita. Then the Lord became angry. Otherwise, he would not show his anger. Unless his devotee's life is in danger, he would not be angry. So, there is one story in the Nectar of Devotion. One demon you know, uh, was saying, I don't fear Krishna. If he comes to kill me, the only thing I have to do is surrender and to him, he will forgive me. <laughs> Very intelligent demon. You know? He knows that. Even if you are a big demon, if you surrender, that means intelligent. To save his life, he will surrender. One surrender is surrender. You can't go back. I changed my mind. No. Then it's just hypocrisy. The day we pray to Krishna and ask him, please, my dear Lord, from now on, please accept me as your eternal servant. I have forgotten you for so many lives. Now I came back to my senses. I understand. Uh, I was a big fool. Please don't reject me. Accept me again. I want to be your eternal servant. The Lord accepts you immediately, gives all protection. But had to come from the heart, not just lip service. Uh, so, some people even criticize Lord Ramchandra because he sent Sita Devi back to the forest, alone and pregnant. Uh, but they don't understand time and circumstances. At that time, in Treta the moral code was very, very strong. If a woman stay one night outside of her home, nobody will marry her. Even if she go to her own family member, understand? It was very strict at that time. So Lord Ramchandra, every night, he would disguise himself as a regular citizen. And he walked the street of Ayodhya to hear what people say about his kingdom, about his ruling. One night he passed in front of the house of a shooter. And the shooter was having a fight with his wife. The wife went with some other man, and she was coming back. So the husband told her, you can leave. Go back to wherever you came from. I'm not going to maintain you. I'm not like Lord, like Ramchandra. 
although his wife was with Ravana, he still accepted her back. So Ramchandra became very much worried, you know. So he consulted with his ministers what to do. Even the sugar opinion was important. Not only the Brahmanas. So they called the Shudra to the king, to the palace, to correct him. Why did you speak like this? This is not correct. And Shudra said, well, I am a Shudra, you are great Brahmanas. But I have a question for you. If your wife go to some other man, you will not accept back. Or the Brahmana could not speak. They would not say anything. Nor see or not. They would not say yes or no. They were silent. They didn't know what to say. So in that way, the Shudra defeated the Brahman. And because of that, Lord Ramachandra was forced to send Sita to the ashram of Padmik. Understand? So it's a different time, different moral code. Not like now. Now it's different. Understand? Now it's you know, you are just to call it you, but if it, what is there available, you do. Uh, is it? But that time was different time. So, Ram Chandra, he set perfect example as human being. Uh, Mariana Purushottam. That's called Mariana Purushottam. People wants uh, the kingdom of Lord Ram, but without Ram. Want the kingdom of God without God. Do they want to be happy, they want to be rich and everything, but no God in their lives. That is not possible. It's not possible. Any other question? Yes. Pass the mic, please. I recently heard that in Kali Yuga, when you think about someone or you commit a mind offense, it's it's not a uh, very important meaning. It's kind of discarded. Yes. But also we hear when we chant, when we create offenses, it's very, uh, very much affects your chanting and your growth. So yes. what is your standpoint? No. In Kali Yuga, you don't pay reaction for a simple thought unless you do it. And if you have a spiritual thought, you get result as you have done it. That is special concession for fallen souls in Kali Yuga. But if you keep thinking of something bad, you will end up doing it. So better stop the thoughts. Understand? If, if just some thought comes to your mind, you reject, you think of Krishna, that's okay. But if you keep thinking of it, then it becomes thinking, feeling, and then waiting. You can't stop it. Give you an example. One in New Devote. New Devote. Uh, he is walking on the street. He passes in front of the bakery. And you see a nice big cake, chocolate cake with strawberries and cream. And, you know? I used to like very much. So the mind that is all very tasty, isn't it? He used to like this cake much before. So he said, no, no, not now. Not now, I need to keep walking. Oh, he could stop and stare at the king. Then just the thought uh, becomes feeling, oh, I feel the need to eat a piece, you know? And then becomes willing, oh, I have to do it. Nobody knows me around here, but the intelligence tells him, wait, wait, you are to walking now. This has egg, you are not supposed to eat egg. The mind answer. Once a year doesn't harm. Once a year doesn't do anything. You got in the case. You start out the mind. First thinking, then waiting, then feeling. Progressive. Is it? So you have to stop it no more than a thought. Can you thought, reject the thought, think of it. But if you, you have to be careful not to offend anyone in the mind. Remember the story of Rupa Goswami? 
One devotee came to offer respect to him, and he was in meditation on the Lord's pastimes in Vrindavan. So he was laughing, and the devotee had deformity in his body. So he told Prabhupada Goswami was laughing at, at his deformity, and so he became upset and he left. Then Prabhupada Goswami, in meditation on the will of the Lord, broke. He couldn't meditate. He tried again and again. He could not concentrate his mind on, on the pastimes of the Lord. So he consulted with his brother, Sanatana Goswami, why this happened to him. Sanatana Goswami told him, this must be that you made some offense to Vaishnava. And unknowingly, unknowingly. And the devotee never should offend knowingly any other Vaishnava. But unknowingly sometimes may happen like, in this particular situation. So Rupa Goswami told his brother, but how can I know who I offended to he rectify this? And Sanatana Goswami said, invite all the Vaishnavas to Prasadam feast. And the one who doesn't come, that's the one who feels offended. So he invited everyone in Vrindavan, everyone became Baptist devotee that he come. Then Rupa Goswami understood who he was. He took Mahaprasad and went to his home. I think in this Mahaprasad, Prina said, Please forgive me if I ever offended you unknowingly. And uh, the devotee said, Well, to tell you the truth, yes, I went to see you the other day. Uh, to pay my respect to you, and you start laughing at me, at my deformities. And Rupa Goswami said, no, 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 please, don't think like that. I wasn't laughing at your deformity. Then what was you laughing at? Please tell me. Well, you're not forcing me to tell the truth. I will tell you the truth. I was having meditation on Radha Krishna Lila. Radha Nara, Radha and the gopis were picking flowers to make garland for Krishna. Krishna was hiding one tree in the branches of a tree. Radharani went to that tree to pick flowers, but the branch was a little high. So Krishna, to help her, pushed with his foot the branch down. So she grabbed the branch and was picking the flowers. But Krishna took off his foot and the branch jumped up, along with Radharani jumped up also. So that made me laugh very much. I'm very sorry. Then the devotee fell at Rupa Goswami feet asking forgiveness. Forgive me, I also offended you by thinking this way. And they offered each one the respect, they embraced them. They saw the misunderstanding. So that sometimes there is misunderstanding even among the body. But we should clear it out and we should, uh, you know, remind each other that we are all servants of the Lord. We should respect each other. Never offend each other. That's very important. Any other last question? Very good. So tomorrow we are going to burn brother. So please come. After the Arti time, we are gonna burn Brahman. Uh, and then we meet Prasad, Rudolf Park and so is become up particular pastime of the Lord. So please come. Tomorrow's my last day here also. Today is Tuesday. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Gaur Tremarandi.